Okay, so I'm gonna try to make this not too much of a rant, but it's kind of a rant. So I was all excited about this video because I know you guys always love it when I share business ideas, interesting, different opportunities, that sort of thing. And I was researching for it because I had some ideas I wanted to share, but I also wanted to discover some new opportunities that were the very best opportunities for 2022. As I was doing this, I was watching different videos, reading different articles and whatnot about the ideas different people had. And I was shocked and horrified to discover that there are some big names out there that are still saying in the year 2022 that the best business ideas and opportunities out there, the best side hustles you can start today are things like joining focus groups, filling out surveys and selling your old stuff on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. What year is this? And how are people not aware that there are much better, much more scalable opportunities out there? With all of those things, it's just not sustainable. And you're gonna be trading your hours for dollars, which means that the dollars you earn will be very limited because your time is limited, obviously. We all have a finite amount of time. And also, even during the hours you are working with those opportunities, your hourly rate's gonna be so low. So all that to say, we're gonna be talking talking about some different business ideas in this video, maybe some things you haven't heard of that are scalable and earn you a much higher hourly rate. We're talking a minimum of about $50 an hour and like I said, scalable. So you could be earning a whole lot more over time as you build these things up. If that is what you wanted when you clicked on this video, then give the like button some love right now to let me know that you are here for these scalable and highly profitable business ideas that are also very easy to start. Okay, so let's do this. The first business idea on my list is flipping items. Now here, I'm not at all talking about just selling stuff you already own. And I also want you to know there are so many options with this. Essentially what you're doing is reselling items. So that's what Walmart and Target do to make money too, right? They buy items from wholesalers, they buy items from manufacturers, and they sell them in their store for a profit. And that's how a lot of businesses are run. Well, the easiest way to get started with this type of reselling business model is simply by buying items that are at a discount or that people don't really want, that people just wanna get rid of, buying them for cheap and then selling them for higher prices. It's simple math, it's an age old business strategy and it works. Now, of course, you could do this in a lot of different ways. You could be flipping houses or flipping cars. And it is true that when you buy and sell things that are more expensive, your profits tend to be larger. Because even if the profit margin itself is small, for example, if you bought a house for $200,000 and then you sold it for $210,000, that would only be essentially, and this is simplifying things, but essentially like a 5% profit margin, but you're earning $10,000. Now, yes, there'd be fees and all that. I'm just keeping it simple for the moment here. So in contrast, just imagine that you were buying and selling something that only cost a few dollars and you had that same 5% profit margin. So for example, maybe you bought something for $10 and then you sold it for $10.50. Same 5% profit margin, but now you are only making 50 cents instead of $10,000. So that's why it is good to buy and sell kind of the most expensive things you can afford. But of course, when you're starting out, you can start smaller and then you can reinvest your profits to be able to invest into bigger and bigger, more and more expensive items to resell. Now I have to tell you, and I don't want to go on about this idea for too long because there's some other great ones, but my favorite way to do this is to take advantage of kind of the different market dynamics that are happening on different platforms. So for example, you may have noticed that stuff tends to go for a lot cheaper on Craigslist than it goes for on eBay. Now this is just simple supply and demand. Basically there is way less demand for an item if you sell it locally. So so when you're selling it on Craigslist, there might only be a few people who want it, and so you cannot charge very much for it. However, if you put it online and now you're selling it to an international audience, that means there are way more people interested. Higher demand means you can ask a higher price. So you can find cheap stuff, sometimes even free stuff on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, those sort of local groups, and then you can sell it in the international market by listing it on eBay or somewhere like that. 
Okay, I'm gonna need to speed this up if I don't want this video to be an hour long. So let's move on to idea number two. You've probably heard, maybe you've noticed, that podcasts have become increasingly popular over the last few years. They are still relatively new, and it's an industry that's exploding as more and more people are discovering the platform for the first time. Now, yes, you could become a podcaster and monetize that, but that's not the business idea I have in mind here, because while that business idea is a great one, it can definitely be difficult to grow and to turn into a sustainable and significant income for yourself. So here's an idea that is much more kind of actionable and you can make it happen more directly. And that is to support those podcasters. You can pretty easily learn how to edit podcasts yourself. In fact, this is some of the easiest work out there. I would say it's quick, it's simple. There's not a lot involved. So with just a little bit of self-education, you can become a podcast editor. And from there, you can either simply offer freelance services by listing yourself on a site like Upwork as a podcast editor, or you can expand your services and become a podcast manager or producer. Podcast editors typically earn anywhere between about $20 and $50 per hour. 20 when you're first getting started, and then as you build up more of a portfolio and more skills, you can increase your rate up to, like I said, about $50 an hour. But if you expand your services as well and you become a producer or podcast manager, you can charge up to about $100 per hour. You can also in the future scale this opportunity by hiring people onto your team and delegating the work so that you can do very, very little of it yourself while still earning the difference between how much you charge your clients and how much you have to pay your different freelancers who work for you. So for example, as a podcast management agency, you might charge your clients about $1,500 per month. At least that's how much I pay my podcast production agency, but of course there's a range. Some agencies might charge as little as 500 and some might charge as much as about 3,000 per month. Anyway, you're charging, let's say 1500, and then you need to hire an editor, perhaps a project manager, perhaps a marketing manager or a designer. Of course, you can do as many of these jobs yourself as you want if you'd rather work and keep more of the profits, or you can delegate them so that you can work very little. Let's say you delegated all of them and you paid each of these contractors about $30 per hour. Producing one episode of the client's podcast could take, say, eight hours for all these contractors together. And eight hours times that $30 per hour rate means that your out-of-pocket per episode would be $240 for your agency. So if your client produces four episodes in a month, then that would be just under about $1,000. So if you're charging your client $1,500, then you are going to be pocketing a little over $500 per month per client with you doing none of the work. Obviously, that's a very scalable business model because since you're not doing most of the work yourself, you can take on a lot of clients in your agency and all you need to do is oversee the contractors and the big picture project management. The third business idea I wanted to share with you today is that of course creation project manager, okay? I'm sure you know courses have gotten really big, really popular. Tons of people wanna create and sell courses. It's a really scalable business model. It can be really profitable and really fun as well. I love doing it myself personally. However, there are a lot of people out there who might be small business owners or they might be teachers or professionals of some sort. They have a skill they wanna teach and they know that if they created a course, they could make money with it, but they do not feel like they are capable of creating the course itself. Maybe they feel like they're not tech savvy enough or it's just too big and overwhelming of a project for them to take on or they're not sure how to organize the curriculum to make a good course. Well, if you learn about how to put together a course and if you learn about how to structure a course, then you can offer services to those people I mentioned, the small business owners, professionals, teachers, and produce their courses for them. You could do this locally and actually go to their location and film them, or you could do it virtually and have them film themselves and send in the videos. You could even manage all of the different aspects of the process, like having the videos edited and all the post-production and having the PDFs for the course design and all of that. People are willing to pay a premium price for this because they see it as an investment. They wanna create the course because they believe that creating the course will be a profitable thing for them to do, and so 
it's not just uh, for fun purchase. They can justify the purchase in their mind. And for that reason, they're willing to pay thousands of dollars for this service. Another thing I love about this business idea is that you don't need a whole lot of clients for it to be really profitable. And it's the sort of business model where you're going to have a lot of word of mouth referrals. Because if you effectively, successfully produce a course for someone and they're pleased with the results, then they're definitely going to tell their friends who also want to create courses about you and recommend your services because you help them out so much. Next up is transcription. Now, transcription is a really easy job or gig to get started with. There are very few barriers to entry. If you can transcribe something effectively, and by the way, transcribing is just when you listen to audio or you are watching a video and listening to the audio and you're typing what you're hearing. So you're turning an audio piece of content or an audio visual piece of content into written text. And this is something that there is a huge demand for these days. And there are many different companies that offer transcription services. Anyway, if you can become decently fast at this simple skill of transcribing, then you can earn anywhere between starting at around $5 an hour, but the faster you get, the more you can earn up to around 50 to $60 per hour. Now I will admit this business idea is a lot less scalable than most on my list. Of course, you could expand this into a transcription agency and there are plenty of people out there who have done that, but it's also just an easy way to get started making some money online if you need an extra extra source of income or you want a side hustle as you're working on building a sustainable and scalable business. Next is an interesting option for selling on Amazon. Now, I'm sure you're aware that you can sell products on Amazon and you probably are also aware that you can write and publish, self-publish a book and sell it on Amazon. But that might be a bit more of a project than you want to take on, even though you know it could definitely be profitable. So here's an interesting alternative. You can sell essentially blank books on Amazon. Now, these books tend to not be completely blank. A lot of the time they are a workbook or some sort of planner where there's a ton of blank space, but you've added some either design elements or some very sparse content throughout the book. These books are really easy to create because there's not much content going on. And a lot of the time they're also very repetitive. So you might have the same thing on every page of a journal with prompts, for example, or a certain type of planner. Now what's really cool is that you can actually create these books, like the manufacturing of them by using print on demand services. So the same services you can use to self publish a book, which by the way, these services don't cost anything. You just upload your designs for the book and then when a customer purchases the book, then the book gets printed. And of course that costs the manufacturing company something, but you don't have to pay for that because instead they just subtract that cost from the price the customer paid. So for example, maybe the customer buys your planner on Amazon for $15 and it costs $3 for them to print and ship that book. So then you earn the $15 minus the $3. $12 is your profit and that's what you get paid. And all you had to do was initially design that book and list it on Amazon. Okay, let's move on to the next idea. Now, this one might at first sound oversaturated, like there'd be too much competition, but I wanna explain why that's not the case. The business idea that I'm talking about is being a writer a freelance writer or perhaps a freelance copywriter. Now, I know that you know that there's a million people out there who want to become an author and they pine away writing all the time, trying to get their work published. It doesn't get published. They don't make any money, okay? And so you kind of might have the idea that writers are starving artists. However, if you don't want to become an author and have a publishing company choose your book and publish it, but instead you just want to be a writer and you're decently good at writing, there is a huge demand for your skills. So I run a business where we create content. We write written articles. I write a ton of emails. I write written content for students who are in my programs. There's a lot of writing that has to be done. And I do most of the writing myself, but sometimes I want to outsource parts of it. 
I cannot tell you how difficult it is to find someone who can write reasonably well. Now, I'm not talking about someone who is Shakespeare or Hemingway. I'm just talking about someone who is a fluent English speaker and knows the basics of punctuation and grammar. I know it might be hard to believe, but it's very difficult to find people who can write well. So if you are someone who has a good English skills and can write well, then there's demand for your services. Writers often earn a starting wage of around $10 an hour, but you can earn so much more as you build up your clientele and you build up a reputation and you show that you have good skills. When I say many people start at $10, that doesn't mean you have to start at $10 an hour. You definitely could start at $30 an hour if you have a little bit of a portfolio to show your potential clients. And as a writer, if you have good skills and you can write also reasonably quickly, you definitely could earn 50 or even $100 per hour. Okay, so for the next one, let's talk about being a Pinterest account manager. Now, if you don't know much about online marketing, you might not know that a lot of businesses that publish written content especially use Pinterest as one of the main sources of traffic for their website. In other words, Pinterest is how they get people to visit their website and read their articles. So clearly they have to use Pinterest and they have to manage their pins on Pinterest and manage their ads and things like that. Pinterest is a surprisingly simple platform, but that doesn't mean that there's not a fair amount of legwork to do just with managing those accounts. If you're interested in becoming a Pinterest account manager, you can watch free videos on YouTube about Pinterest strategy and account management, and you could also take courses on a site like Udemy, all about, again, Pinterest strategy and account management, learn the skills that you need. You could experiment with it for yourself or for free for clients at first, and then you can start charging for your services once you feel like you know what you're doing. Another thing that's cool about this opportunity is that much of Pinterest marketing can be automated. So a lot of it is just about the initial setup and then managing things once they are systems that are up and running on autopilot, which won't take very much of your time. So once you have a new client that is onboarded, you might spend as little as about four hours per month managing their account, just making sure that all those automated systems are running well, and they might be willing to pay you 500, 1000, or even higher amounts for those services. So I just mentioned Udemy and how that can be a good place for you to potentially learn some of these skills. Well, Udemy, in case you don't know what Udemy, it's just a course platform, a learning platform. You can purchase inexpensive courses on the platform to learn different skills. That is the next business idea I want to share with you today. It's being a course creator. But I just want you to know that there are so many different ways to do this. And I specifically mentioned Udemy because a lot of people, they want to create and sell courses, but they feel really stopped by the fact that they don't have an audience to sell those courses to. Now, there's a lot of ways to get around this, but what I'm talking about right now is you can create and sell your courses by listing them on Udemy and Skillshare and using a site like Teachable to be able to sell them also to your own audience as well. And what's cool about this is that there's absolutely no reason why you can't put your course on multiple platforms and sell it on multiple platforms. And that way, instead of putting all your eggs in one basket and then having to work super hard to try to get enough sales on Udemy or enough sales just from your own small audience to be able to support yourself, instead, you get to create multiple sources of income kind of instantly. You just create the course once and then you list it on these different platforms. And while some of them may not create very many sales, because you've diversified, there's good odds that your course will take off and start getting reviews and getting promoted on one of these platforms. And especially if you create several courses and you do this, you just have really good chances of one of the courses organically taking off and making you a significant amount of money. And from there, you can take advantage of that and you can use that one course to be able to get other courses in front of the same audience. The last business idea that I wanted to share with you today is a local business, not an online business. It's that of drone videographer. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but drones have gotten much and much cheaper over the last few years. It used to be that you had to pay at least about 500 or $1,000 for a decent drone, but now we've started seeing good quality drones for as little as $50 to $100, which is just 
insane. A lot of people think that flying drones and doing videography with them is really fun work. And especially if you like being outside, that's an added perk. Drone videography is a highly sought after commodity in several different industries. For example, event planners need to hire drone videographers for their clients' events, and realtors want to hire drone videographers for their real estate listings. And then of course, you've also got content creators of all sorts, anyone from movie producers to YouTubers to course creators who want to hire drone videographers to be able to have some amazing footage to add to their content. As you can see, there is an increasingly large demand for these services. But here's the thing. In order to be a drone videographer legally, in most areas, you have to get some sort of certification or get a license to be able to professionally fly a drone. And that limits your competition, which can be good for you. Of course, there are pros and cons to this, but it can be good for you when you're trying to start this business. So if you're willing to jump through those few hoops, getting your certification and getting your license, then you can really take advantage of this opportunity and get a lot of the work that is available out there doing something that can be really fun. Well, there you have it. Nine of the biggest, best business ideas for 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that some of these ideas really stood out to you and were interesting to you and sound like good opportunities. If you heard at least one idea that you are interested in learning more about, give this video a like to let me know that you appreciated it. It really helps my channel out. And if you want to find more business ideas, maybe you're still looking or you want some guidance on how to get these business ideas off the ground, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. What I do professionally is I help people start online businesses. And so that's what I talk about here on this channel, how to successfully start and grow online businesses. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you have notifications turned on to find out when my next video is posted. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having an amazing week. I love you and I'll see you again next time.